There's a battle going on among the candidates themselves over which of them is really from the town, as Mark Mardell reports. For 40 years, Hartlepool has been a Labour stronghold, a northeastern industrial town once scarred by unemployment, now booming for many. For Labour to lose it would stun the party. To lose it to the Liberal Democrats would confirm they were marching into the government's heartlands. But to hold it would suggest that march could be halted and would steady Labour's nerves. So they're pulling no punches, promoting their candidate as the local man, Ian Wright from the town, mocking the Lib Dem candidate by preparing a welcome to Hartlepool pack. Until recently, she lived in a town 20 miles away. Got a rented flat on the marina. You know, she actually lives in a, in a big house in a very affluent village outside of Darlington. It's that two-faced nature that I think the people of Hartlepool um, feel, feel, take exception to. The object of all this, the Lib Dems' Jodie Dunn, barrister, former DJ, fluent Finnish speaker and karate brown belt. She writes a daily diary on the internet, scrutinised by Labour. Once she wrote that canvassing she'd met people who were drunk. Every day since she's been accused of insulting the town. I think it's unnecessary. I wish that we could be more grown up about the way we act in politics. I think it's what puts a lot of people off being involved in politics and why people don't vote. They are fed up of the negative campaigning, and I've been told that many times on the doorstep. Of course, the candidate's postcode is not the only issue. People are really worried about drug fueled crime and the fate of the local hospital. Doing one's best. Like all the candidates, the Conservative's Jeremy Middleton, who comes from Newcastle, says only he has the solutions. We are the only alternative, and uh, I think it could be an exciting election. You really think you can win? It's possible. I'm not going to forecast the results, but it is certainly possible. Anything is possible in a by-election. UKIP's Stephen Allison is looking round a restored lifeboat, but where's he from? A Labour canvasser assured his mother-in-law he wasn't a local candidate, so he took action. We actually went down to the Labour Party office with my passport and my birth certificate, um, which actually obviously showed place of birth, Hartlepool, to show the Labour Party that they didn't have the only local candidate. According to much-loved local legend, Hartlepool's always had an ambivalent attitude towards outsiders. They're meant to have hanged a monkey as a French spy during the Napoleonic Wars. Labour hopes this fierce localism, plus the relative prosperity that's come to this poor town, symbolised by the marina here, will save them in the by-election. Mark Mardell, BBC News, Hartlepool. And there are 14 candidates in all standing in the Hartlepool by-election. Here they are. The by-election takes place a week tomorrow on September the 30th. The appeal to voters at today's Labour conference will be put to an early test in Hartlepool. The town's voters will elect a new MP this Thursday after Peter Mandelson resigned to take up his post at the European Commission. Our correspondent Vicky Young has been following the latest campaigning. Hartlepool has been a rock-solid Labour seat for 40 years. The party's defending a majority of more than 14,000. But recent by-election losses in Brent and Leicester mean Labour's fighting for every vote. Hello, how are you doing? The Liberal Democrat by-election team moved in weeks ago. Leader Charles Kennedy's made several visits. His long-term aim is to replace the Tories as the main opposition party. He insists contests like this one show that's possible. If you put in hard work in what used to be safe Labour seats, then you can leapfrog the other parties, take on the government and win. Now, I'm not saying that we're there yet in this by-election, but we're certainly chasing their heels. Labour's campaign's been boosted by celebrity endorsements, but the main focus is on local issues like crime and antisocial behaviour. The message is that Labour's been good for Hartlepool. I haven't been here for about 10 years, and this marina and, and the business parks and stuff that have sprung up, that's Labour Council's La Labour MP, and, uh, you know, this is what we want. Jeremy, hello. Welcome. Good Welcome. to see you. Good to see you. The Conservatives are shrugging off suggestions that their support here is dropping. They finished second in 2001. They're not writing off their chances this time, but say it's longer-term trends that matter. Come the general election, I think people will see the Conservative Party is the only party that is offering a credible alternative, an alternative party that will actually deliver. The UK Independence Party did well in the Euro elections in June and says its Eurosceptic message offers a refreshing alternative. I think they support us, obviously, principally, because of our stand on Europe, which is very different from that of the traditional parties but also because we do offer something different. 
Whatever verdict the voters of Hartlepool deliver on Thursday, there will be repercussions for the parties nationally. Anything less than a victory for Labour would be a disaster and hopes of a Tory revival would be set back if they can't mount a strong challenge here. And with a general election on the horizon, all the parties are looking for something positive from this local contest. Vicky Young, BBC News, Hartlepool. And there are 14 candidates in all standing in the Hartlepool by-election. And just to remind you, voting takes place in Hartlepool this Thursday.